If there had been 400 years of no word from God, and then all of a sudden there was a word, I bet it would be in part. When we read the Bible, we understand that from the Old Testament to the New Testament, a period of approximately 400 years, which the Bible tells us, and it says there was no spoken word from God to the Jewish nation. 400 years they had no prophetic word. And then we get to Matthew 3, and all of a sudden, here's John the Baptist, and he has the first recorded prophetic word to the nation of Israel. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Hallelujah. That's the first word they had heard prophetically for 400 years. I think that's pretty important. I think we need to pay attention to that. If, if in Matthew 3, John says, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then we go from there to chapter 4. Jesus is led in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil uh, three times. And then we get to chapter 5. And guess what Jesus does in chapter 5? He makes this statement. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, I just think repentance is a pretty big thing in the kingdom of God. The first word that was spoken to a nation, turn your back on the way that you have been living with such a displeasure of that sin that you turn your back on it. We know that repentance means just to turn 180 degrees from it, but Really, there's more than that when we recognize or we acknowledge that sin in our life, and that's what he wanted the, the Hebrew children to do is to acknowledge the sin in your life and turn to uh, this new kingdom order that Jesus is instituting in the earth. Repent and turn from your wicked ways. You know, we have the story of the lady caught in adultery and the Jewish leaders uh, threw her down at Jesus' feet, and he said, okay, what are you going to do with her? The law of Moses said she needs to be stoned to death. Well, they're missing the mark because it's not just her, but also the man that was caught with her. But anyway, they missed that. But Jesus looked at her and, he, and asked her, where are your accusers? And of course, we know that they all left. And he says, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more have the fruit of repentance. So how do you and I know that, that we have repented? Or let me ask you this. How do we know that I've really forgiven somebody? See, there's fruit to that. For me just to say, I forgive you, but if there's no fruit following that up, and the fruit is the fruit of the Spirit, that I totally release whatever that was in forgiveness and I forgive that person totally, and I know that I've done it with all my heart. And repentance is the same way we acknowledge that we've sinned, and then we have an expressed disapproval of that sin, or that whatever it was that, we, that we're getting rid of, that, that, that we're repenting from. I'm not going to do that again. I repent. And, and we see it, we look at it as God looks at it. So true repentance is first an acknowledgement. You know, we've got to do something with sin. We either play games with it or we get rid of it. Let's just, let's just take stealing. You know, kids, we grow up and we have an opportunity to steal and we find out our parents tell us it's not right to steal. That is wrong. Well, as we grow up, if, if I steal something, I get caught condemnation comes, I'm either vindicated or I'm found guilty. And if I'm found guilty, condemnation comes in the, in the natural realm. But the Bible says there's now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. So I can repent fully by number one, acknowledging that it is sin, turn away from it with an express disapproval of it. It's wrong to confess my sins and then I walk in the blessings of God because the blessings of God produce righteousness. So repentance is huge and I think it's still today. 
you know, we have a slogan around here. We don't change the message. The message changes us. And what Jesus calls sin, you know, it's still sin today. Lying is still a sin. Killing is still a sin. Murder is still a sin. Adultery is still a sin. Idolatry is still a sin. But there has to be a recognition of it. And when we recognize it, that it goes against God's determined will for our life. And we hate it like God hates it then we really walk in freedom. Amen? I pray this has been a blessing to you. I know it's blessed me. Uh, I don't just flippantly say I forgive you anymore, and I don't just flippantly say I repent, because in repentance, there's a fruit of repentance, and that's when you walk in the fullness of God. Amen? God bless you. The Word of God's working today. 